Hi. In this video, we're going to go to the next step of uh, the functional configuration of Sign Butler. Imagine we have a very simple document. Uh, this can be your own uh, layout, your own template, of course. But the most important item here is we have a signature part. This is where we want our customer to sign our document, our proposal, our agreement, our contract, whatever. This is where we want him to sign. Okay, so let's first do some configuration, some setup, and then we go to the next steps. First of all, I want to see that our data source now actually gets our, uh, gets our signer. And for the signers, we have actually created some lookup fields on the uh, opportunity. So you guessed it already. We will start here from an opportunity and we will then have our uh, signer one. That's actually the signer that we want to have it signed. This is just a simple contact uh, that is created and the email of the signature or the signature request will go to yeah, my email address. So, okay, let's, let's see how we can make sure this signer is going to be our signer from now on. Step one, we go to the data sources and we go to the uh, opportunity da uh, data source and we have gone we are going to add all of the signing fields uh, the, the 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 first name the last name the email address mobile number whatever of our signer so let's go for signer one so that's the signer of our uh, con uh, the, the signer contact I'm going to add the uh, ID field here already. So that's just add field. And then I'm going to follow the relationship. Now I'm at the level of the contact. So I can just say I want the, uh, let's go for name. I want the first name. I want the last name. Then I also need the email address. And I need the mobile number, the mobile phone. Okay. I have all my, my fields. Yeah. Again, for everybody who wants to add a signer, we will need the, uh, uh, the signer contact. So that's the ID field of that signer, the first name of the signer, the last name of the signer, the email address, and the mobile phone. These four, five fields are always required for every signer that we need. Save my query, and let's go to our docconfig. I've created a, a, a sign butler demo docconfig already. So let's take a look at it. It starts from this document and this document has a signature part. So I agree with you. This doesn't look very well and you probably do not want this table to be uh, here. And that's why I always go to uh, uh, the table properties and I say I do not want any borders and I do not want any padding left or right. So my, uh, my table and my text will just blend into the document as if it is not there. Okay. Let's add the signer first name and the signer last name. And then uh, we'll upload this template uh, to our uh, configuration here. Add a config type, signer first name. It's a single, of course, comes from the opportunity. Okay, sorry for that. I just have to refresh my data source. So it parses the query. And now I have all my fields here. Add the config again, signer first name opportunity and then we need the first name and the merge field okay we do the same for signer last name Hola. signer last name add the config type signer last name opportunity we get the last name that you want to show there and of course save this so now this item is here that's not very pretty i want it gone so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to set it to white the color must be white and i'm going to take the uh, arial uh, letter type so just to make sure that it's as basic as possible and it's not uh, it's not part of anything that we will see when we generate the documents okay signing document is ready i will just uh, get I will just copy the path and upload it here. Oh, upload it here, of course. Okay, 
save the server, everything should check out. Okay, looking good. I have a simple demo set up here, so I can just review, preview my, uh, my document already. And as I, you can see, it says signer1, that's the first name and the last name. You do not see any table, you do not see any uh, signature placeholder, so everything looks okay. Let's take a step back. Let's go to the signature placeholder because this one is important. I'll make it visible again. And you will see here that it starts with hashtag SIG01. That's important for the, uh, for the placeholder. So the hashtag SIG01 will identify this as being the first signature to be placed. If you need multiple signatures, you guessed it, it's gonna be hashtag SIG02, 03, 04, and so forth and so forth. Then, we need a region on our document identified that the system will put our signature into. This is the height and the width. So at this moment, I'm saying it can be 300 pixels high and 200 pixels wide. And then, of course, we end it with a hashtag. So from now on, everybody knows how our uh, merge fields work for uh, signatures. And yeah, you can just start playing around with that. In many cases, you uh, might want to have, uh, um, how is it called, dynamic signatures and things like that. Then you can just have a merge field here in place of this uh, one. And you can use the power of uh, PDF Butter to actually fill in this field and fill in the numbers and use the dynamic uh, uh, signing capabilities of PDF Butter and Sign Butter together. Okay, we've seen that the document is generated, that all looks fine. So we have now a document, we have a configuration. Next step is we go to Sign Butter, of course, and we are going to create what we call a Sign Butter uh, Sign Request Template. This will tell the system how to behave when somebody requests a sign request starting from the object you are on. The sign request name is going to be uh, sign butler demo one. Why not? Uh, one signer. Okay, we see select master object. That's going to be the opportunity in our case. Yeah, we start to start the request from an opportunity. This will show all of the uh, um, all of the lookup fields on the sign request object. We select a data source. This is going to be our opportunity data source because there we have our signer that we want to use uh, the master object. Uh, so this can be uh, any field on the opportunity that will identify, give a specific name to our sign request. In our case, we'll just use the name of the opportunity. But if you want to create a formula field here and use that one as, an, uh, as a field, as a unique field for uh, giving it a name to our sign request, why not? Now we're just going to use the name of the opportunity. Okay, uh, for the rest, I will just leave it as it is. There is other videos that will explain how this will work. Then I'm going to add a signer. Order is one. It's of type signer. He can only sign manually, for instance, and via, uh, let's say manually and via mail. If you just want to have mail there, you want to have SMS there. So there are multiple signing methods. And this allows that the user the, uh, that will actually have to sign it can select how he, how he or she would rather sign it. Uh, let's go for manual and mail. So we can select manual and mail. We can select our data source and from the data source we have, first of all, we have the ID of our signer contact that we need. We have the first name, we have the last name, we have the email address, so we have the phone number. Uh, and then we can optionally, optionally set the language of our user. In a multi-language environment, you would probably have a lookup field that, or a formula field that will identify the language of your user, or you maybe have a drop-down box, a, a, a pick list, or anything like that. In this case, we'll just go for English. Not mapped, so no field will map it. It will be always a mail in English. We just click the Add button here. We see now that we have one stakeholder, one person with role signer, so he or she has to sign our document. Next, 
uh, when the document is signed, we want to attach it as a file to our opportunity. If you can do file override, add version, so it's the same options as in PDF Butler. Uh, and if you're still using attachments, that's also perfectly fine. You can just use attachments as well. For now, we go for file, we submit. And as you can see now, we have our first sign request template. This is an important step because we need a sign request template from a PDF Butler. Okay, so let's uh, maybe go. So we want to go now, we want to uh, go to uh, uh, PDF Butler because we want to create now a pack that combines our generation of the documents and the request to send it to a sign Butler. That we do with a PDF Butler pack. Okay, let's create a new pack here. Let's call it a uh, um, request signature. And our doc config will of course be sign butter demo. That's uh, okay. That is all that is required here. And then the most important step, we add an actionable. So we tell the system to take an action once the document is generated and we have multiple uh, record types here we'll, gen we'll just use sign butler one next okay we will now give this a name okay this is just gonna be a request signature act so that's fine or oh, we can ignore this one because it's linked to our pack uh, the class you can just copy paste from uh, the, uh, the input that from our academy. So this is going to be Catmus sign actionable sign butler silent. There is another video that will show the difference between silent and not silent, but that's okay for now. We can go uh, for the silence, and then we have our sign butler template. That's the one we have just created. We don't want to go for sign now, uh, so we just want to send it out, and then the user can sign when he uh, actually wants it. So that's done. Save our pack. Okay, this is the pack. I'm going to take the ID of the pack and I've already have my uh, page here set out for our edit page on the opportunity. And on the opportunity, I'm just going to say I'm going to add a pack. This is the identifier of my pack. The pack name is going to be sign quote, for instance. And yeah, that's actually it. So click save. Go to our opportunity. Click the button, it will now generate a document, send it out for signing. So if you click the button, it will generate a document, send it out for signing. But I forgot a very important step. Our actionable is not active. So let's go back to our actionable and let's activate it. Save. Let's try this again. So I click the button will generate a document, send it out for signature. Yes, send for signing. So this is our config, uh, confirmation. Now, um, as I am the first signer, signer one, I would have received an email and yes, I did. So this is the email I have just received and it's nicely branded because we are sign butler of course so it's branded as sign butler you can brand it any way you want let's click the uh, sign document button and i will end up in our signature page and you will see that our signature request is there this is not looking very nice of course because it's a very big uh, uh, signature request so we might want to play around with this height so i'm not going to sign this one i'm going to go back to my word template and i'm going to say let's undo hola that's too much let's uh, i'm going to say it's 200 by 200 instead of 300 by 300 i'm going to add an extra enter here so put it in white okay save it and um, um, info copy the path let's try this again uh, where is it yeah here we'll just upload my document again save to server okay and now when i click the button again it will generate a new sign request hopefully i 
it's uh, generating the document, uh, getting the signed request ready. Yes, it's there. So just waiting for the email now. The email would come normally. It's already there. Okay, I will open up the email in this screen, go for the button sign documents. And you will see now it's completely different. It's less spacey. It uh, takes the, uh, the items. So this is our demo. This concludes our entire setup of sign butler uh, for a single user.